this simply blew my mind it's gilded look at that it is one of the now i know i know this shade has been going i think perhaps even viral because sophie richie because oh my if you haven't seen me without makeup it's can't stop loving you by kilian gucci are more silky valentino they are more airbrush Giorgio Armani. ready for summer now every time that i use this k18 one i'm just gonna take you on vacation without jumping into a plane oh my gosh i'm obsessed with this baby it's romantic it's pretty it's sensual it's beautiful it's mesmerizing it's uh, ethereal <laughs> Here we are, I'm gonna dive in into my April favorites. Wow, what a month. I tried so much makeup because the Sephora savings event was going on, so I ended up buying a ton of things. So today I'm gonna be giving you my top, top favorites and a few things here and there that I wanted to give you an update on how I feel about certain products. Not all the products that I tried because that will be like, hours and hours on end although i know this video it's gonna be a little bit long so make sure you have your favorite drink your lunch your dinner whatever it is but let's go ahead and get it started my first favorite this baby right here this is a mirror that i was sent by one of my beautiful subscribers is a gift it's something that i didn't purchase but i want to say once again thank you so much she doesn't want me to tell her name so i'm respecting that and i just want to say thank you because i really needed a mirror but oh oh yes chanel <laughs> you know my friends i have a thing for chanel i see the bad things for chanel too but I also have a thing for Chanel. <laughs> and talking about Chanel, I have to tell you, these earrings, I actually got them pre-love from Fashion File, and they are just so beautiful. I think that they are a gorgeous statement piece that you can use it with easy. I, I usually say I don't like things that scream Chanel, and these earrings are kind of like, in a way, if you know, like you can immediately see that it has the CC logo, but otherwise they are a little bit like, you have to kind of like, to know. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it because the CC is there, but it's not there. They look like a hoop on one side. They are just so interesting. They are not from any of the newest collections. They were actually from the, I think 22, no. 22C Cruise Collection. I will be leaving details of all the products that I'm mentioning today on the description box below with the links and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and try to find these ones because like I said, they don't sell it anymore at Chanel's boutique, but you may find it pre-love. And one thing that I like from Fashion File is that you are guaranteed to get authentic products. So they go through a process to make sure that the items are authentic. And then you can actually send them also to be authenticated by someone else but anyhow love these earrings and talking about earrings these i have not taken them out at all for at least i think the last two months or so <laughs> these are the lucia earrings by idol i absolutely love them because they give that kind of like a look of a little bit more edgy something a little bit more different they are denty and you can actually adjust them they are modular so if you want to use them on the front you know like your first ear piercing you can adjust them you can actually change them like one side to the other side and have kind of like a different look i love love these earrings so much and talking about jewelry these beautiful rings from Ana Luisa. i have been using them so often lately one is this rope ring which is very kind of classy and then this ring over here it's a little bit different it's not so common and again it's another statement piece and i really enjoy the gold from Ana Luisa too because it goes really well with other pieces of jewelry that they are on the lighter gold spectrum like my Bulgari bracelet and this video by the way is not sponsored by Ana Luisa, by Idol, nothing of that. I did a sponsorship with Ana Luisa on my latest haul video but you know my friends I have been using Ana Luisa for this is I think my third year going into it love that your jewelry love that they have a mix of things dented pieces and also pieces that are a little bit more of a statement piece and talking about hands and jewelry and whatnot this nail polish i'm so in love with this nail polish i want you know my friends i usually use the typical natural shades white creamy colors light pinks i don't go for something too bold it's just not me 
but because we're in the spring i really wanted to bring a little bit of a spring and so i wanted to bring a little bit of kind of like a lavender lilac -y color so you actually saw me wearing i think it was during last week or the week and a half before this nail polish by lights lacquer which i have to tell you lights lacquer their formula for nail polish is really really good nothing to envy to chanel or dior no this is great formulation the shade is the one wear and it was from the year friends collection like you know friends the show collection this is not any longer available now there's a difference right here i just brought this by tatcha because if you were wondering what nail polish i was using on my previous videos is this shade not the one that i'm wearing on my nails but this shade right here and if you have this tatcha the luminous dewy skin means or the tatcha not the water cream the dewy the dewy cream the way that the shade is going to look on your nails is going to be like this shade exactly like this shade now if you want something a little bit that leans just a little bit more what i will say lilac a little bit more pinkish because this one has more of a bluish undertone i actually like this one even better it's also by lights lacquer and it's the shade lilac wine and it has this jelly kind of finish which is just gorgeous and this is the shade that i'm actually using today and if by comparison if you have this box <laughs> i'm trying to look for things that are alike but if you have this set by tatcha and you see this kind of lilac shade right here it is the same shade as my nails i'm just giving it to you for reference because i know it's hard to really get set on a nail polish if you don't see it in person and also you have to count your skin tone and undertone and whatnot but anyhow those nail polishes have been my favorite so far for springtime i think they look just so pretty now let's go for the fragrance that has stolen my heart from the minute that i received a sample so i received first a sample from house of siash and then later on house of siash sent to me as kind of like an early mother's day gift this beauty is whispers of truth and when they sent me that little sample, I was like, oh, I'm in love with it. This is so beautiful. And then they sent to me a full bottle. So I have had this bottle for, I think, about three weeks, pretty much. And oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this baby. I mean, first of all, look at all these Swarovski crystals. It's just so beautiful. The little cupcake, white. I'm a mom. And I mean, if I was to receive these from my kids, from my husband, I will be like so floored it's just so beautiful the presentation and this video by the way is not sponsored by nobody nothing of that but let me tell you okay it has right here it says house of siage whispers of truth let me tell you the notes and this is going to be the fragrance of the day oh my gosh this is so gorgeous if you want one of the most beautiful spring summer fragrances you're gonna love this so much it does have bergamot, grapefruit. It also has jasmine and rose, but it's just like so fine and pretty much not really present too much. It does have caramel and moss. This fragrance, if you like Baccar Rouge 540, if you like Bone Number no. 9 Tribeca, this is that kind of fragrance. It's incredible. The Siage, I mean, House of Siage, obviously is incredible is long lasting is refreshing is awakening when i'm telling you that it reminds me a little bit of baka rouge 540 is not a dupe at all whatsoever i think perhaps whispers of truth is a little bit more predictable because it doesn't have that changing factor as baka rouge 540 it does have that sweetness of cotton candy but instead of cotton candy is caramel it's just stunning and i'm just so happy so so happy to have it in my collection and it is a fragrance that i it's really hard for me to put it down because it's that that good and i'm pretty sure by the time that you're watching this video when i'm uploading this video they are running a sale on their website and i'm pretty sure this fragrance is like around i think 30 or 35 percent off i mean it has a really really good discount so if you're thinking for a mother's day gift and you want to go safe or if you're planning for a gift and you don't want to 
get something that, okay, this is just too, too edgy and something that, you know, is hard perhaps to be like, oh, should I get this type of fragrance for someone? Go with this one. It's so, so good. In the topic of fragrances, I tried a new fragrance from Tom Ford, Soleil de Fou. And this fragrance is more what I will describe it as a summer, mid-afternoon, evening fragrance. It is very different for Tom Ford. Very, very different. It has tuberose, but it's a green tuberose. I love tuberose. I love when the tuberose is blooming, but this one, I feel that it's more of like a green tuberose, freshly cut. It has benzoin, and if you like sandalwood, you're going to love this fragrance too. It's very clean, but also very seductive and a little bit intriguing. More than seductive, I feel like a little bit more sensual. Not too, real, not too much of like a hot kind of fragrance, but very sensual. And actually, it's long lasting. Something that with Tom Ford, it's kind of like not knowing <laughs> would it be something that is going to be long lasting or not. It doesn't sit really close to the skin. People are going to be able to smell it and you will get compliments for it. And then another fragrance that I just added to my collection, but I have been just like, oh, going for it more and more and more is Can't Stop Loving You by Kilian. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. Let me tell you, my friends. So this fragrance has a top note orange blossom. And it is a fragrance that honestly, when I was reading through the notes first, I, I was a little bit like, mm, is this going to be too much as Love Don't Be Shy by Killian too, but no, this is completely different. This is to me kind of like the older sister of Love Don't Be Shy, but they are different. They are completely different because you see, Love Don't Be Shy is a little bit more marshmallow -y, more like sweet kind of fragrance. This one instead does have honey, so it is more soft, more smooth. I think if you just imagine the honey dripping down with a little beautiful ambery color that's how i see this fragrance is so stunning and it's a compliment getter is very unique it's not too strong it does have a little bit of vanilla but it's not sweet at all in fact in the opening i feel a little bit of a burst of freshness first but then it goes super smooth creamy like i said that honey note is just spectacular and that orange blossom is not your typical floral scent it's tender but oh fantastic and it's just smooth i don't want to say powdery because it's not powdery but it's kind of that very i don't know just tender kind of fragrance to me a fragrance that if you're thinking like a gift or if you are a bride and if you want something a little bit different and you're getting married kind of like in the earliest portion of the day, this can be a fragrance for you, definitely. And I have that in mind, you know, brides right now because <laughs> every weekend I have a wedding and not because I'm a guest, because I work for weddings, <laughs> a lot of weddings. So it's wedding season for me and I'm just immediately thinking about that. It's just like, for example, this baby, Whispers of Truth is a fragrance that for a bride, it will be just fantastic too. Hey okay, friends, sunscreens. So really quick right here. I have used that Super Goop Glow Sunscreen for forever. So I know how it is. It looks beautiful. It gives a little bit of a shine to your skin. You can wear it alone. You can wear it under makeup, wear it like primer. It works beautifully, never peels off. And it's just so good even for sensitive skins like mine. Now, I tried this new Cosas Dream Bean SPF 40. And you have to, first of all, shake it really well. If you want to have just a little bit of radiance, not as much as a glow screen sunscreen by Supergoop, then go for this one. Also, this one is a mineral SPF. So that is a plus right there too. And now the one thing that has surprised me so much is this Shiseido SPF on a stick 50. This simply blew my mind. So if you are a person that likes to go with makeup, even if you are, I don't know, on vacation by the pool and you're going to be exposed to the sun or like me, I have 
fall. I don't have to wear makeup, but I do wear a little bit of makeup when I'm catering or coordinating a wedding. And so if I'm outside, I want to be able to actually reapply sunscreen. And it can be a little bit difficult when you have makeup on. Oh my gosh, these solve all your problems. If you want to reapply sunscreen with makeup on, look no farther. This is it. It comes on a stick. Let me show you. Let me show you because you're not going to believe. So, see, I have everything on, right? Go for it. Did it remove my blush? It didn't. Did it move that? No, it didn't. Is there a tiny bit, but barely, barely, a little bit of transfer on the stick? Minimal. Minimal. This is just minimal. I mean, like, pretty much nothing. Hello. This is perfection. <laughs> this is perfection. And this is something that I will suggest to everybody all year round have this. It's not greasy. It will not change the appearance of your makeup. So like the finish, it will not make you look extra glowy or extra greasy. It's not going to drag your makeup that you will end up with your blush here and your bronzer right over here. No, <laughs> it's nothing of that. Believe me, this is an incredible product. I'm so happy, so happy I got it. And I actually, in fact, got a backup, not really a backup, but I just got a couple extra ones for my children because I feel that also is very nice for sensitive skin. So I got actually three more, one for each of my kids. So it is amazing. And I think it is the perfect, the perfect SPF on a stick. I tried two new primers during the month of April. This one by Peter Thomas Roth that have been going viral. I actually use it right here. Now I I'm able to use it under makeup. Now, the secret right here with this primer, and it states on that box too, it is that you have to let dry completely whatever you put under it. So say you have a skincare, so say you go with your SPF, like I did on my demo, you have to let it completely absorb by your skin, dry, or take off the excess if you still have excess. Like for example, I usually use my SPF before going with makeup, but I let it sit normally, doesn't matter if I'm using this primer or not, 15 to 20 minutes before, because I wanna make sure the SPF is absorbed. So anyhow, that is first thing what you need to do. So say you use your skincare SPF, go drink your coffee, get ready your clothing, and start changing, whatever is the case, and then if you want to use this baby right here, you will use it. It really helps with enlarged pores, fine lines. I honestly just like to use it right here. And that is something that I usually do. If you have been following me for any amount of years here on my channel, you know that the only area that I really focus in terms of primer of or minimizer primers is this area right here. That's what I feel that is the most important for me. And that's what I have been doing with this. So really good primer. And then also this glow recipe primer, it, it is supposed to smooth your pores. And it does, I'm using it on this side. Not as much as this one. This one I feel is a little bit more blurring. This one is a little bit more mattifying too. So if you don't want so much of mattifying effect, you may want to go with this one. This one is not as potent per se as this one. It's not like so like obvious that it's completely blurring, but it does the job. The only thing with the Glow Recipe one, it is that it's also a serum. So you have AHAs and BHAs, I think. Um, and that's the thing. I feel that this product by Glow Recipe, it is, well, Glow Recipe is a skincare line and therefore they are producing this product thinking that you're going to use the entire line of Glow Recipe. So that is something that you have to think about it because you don't want to get, you don't want to overdo on the type of serums or active ingredients that you're using on your skin. If say you don't want to use an AHA, BHA, you want to make sure you first Mm, tweak a little bit your skincare when using this product. And that is my suggestion. I didn't find out any problems in terms of like peeling off or like sensitivity on my skin, nothing of that. But I think we have to be mindful when we're using something that is 
um, primarily a serum and a skincare product that sometimes they are products nowadays on the makeup line that they come with, they come with already, like say, well, SPF is the obvious thing, but some of them, they have niacinamide right now, and then there are other products, and overdoing on anything in the long run, it can sensitize your skin. I'm not saying that this will do, but what I'm saying is like, you know, make sure like read the ingredients, make sure that you're not overdosing your skin because hey, you know, your skin is the largest organ in your body and it can be also be overdosed. And that's why we have breakouts, sensitivity, we can cause all sorts of different things. But in conclusion, both products are great. Aside to the Garland Terracotta Le Tan Foundation, I have been using a ton, the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation on a Stick. This is nothing new to me. I have been using it for years. And if you check past videos of mine, favorite videos, you're going to see that this baby, I have it on favorites, on and on and on and on. This is a great foundation, whether you want it for traveling, for easy use, you can build up the coverage super easy. It works fantastic throughout the entire day. The, um, you don't feel it on your skin. It's very lightweight. It's lotion-like in terms of like how light it is. It's not heavy. It is fantastic. And I love the natural with a subtle radiance look that it gives to the skin. It is the foundation that I'm wearing today. Now going into concealer. Nothing really has changed in the month of April. I have been going for between that Chanel Le Sublimage Corrector U. It is fantastic if you want full coverage, if you want to keep nice radiance underneath your eyelids. You don't need to use a color corrector with it. It is fantastic. It is long wearing. It's just magical to me. Ah, uh, this takes over absolutely everything. And then another concealer that I had been using for those days that I want to, not that this will give me like a makeup kind of, you know, look. No, it doesn't because it's just so divine and luxurious finish. But if I want to go just even more simple, I have been going with the Tom Ford Traceless Concealer on a Stick. It is fantastic. Also a great kind of concealer on the go for traveling. It pairs really well. This one with this one, very alike, not in formula, but kind of like the finish. It gives a radiance to the skin and it's also so long lasting. It does increase under the eyelid which is fantastic and in terms of color corrector because oh my if you haven't seen me without makeup go and check when I do like a try on haul because I have panda under eye circles they are so horrible they are so bad and I have been enjoying a lot this Givenchy color corrector now I'm very honest with you the new Givenchy Frizz Libre concealer is not for me and it, it is it is not Givenchy. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. No, I don't know how to sing. <laughs> it, I'm the problem. I'm the problem because I do have these very dark under eye circles. So the concealer itself, it doesn't work on me because I'm looking for more of a medium to full coverage with a very natural finish, which is super, super hard to find because most of concealers, they do have very you know, like dry looking and very makeup -y looking. That's why I like these ones right here. But if you like something more alike to the Giorgio Armani, the Luminous Silk Concealer, you're gonna love the concealer by Givenchy. If you don't have too much to cover because it's very stretchy, it kind of like goes with, you know, the your expressions so it doesn't really gather on fine lines it just looks really good the only thing though that i want to make you aware of is that the concealer is not long wearing it will just start fading away between three to four hours but like i said it, it's not gonna be really a problem if your the amount of coverage that you're looking for is just barely there. If you're looking more for that brightening effect of a concealer, then you will like the concealer by Givenchy. But going back to the corrector, this is fantastic. It works so well underneath other concealers. I don't need to use it with the Chanel one because this is basically a color corrector in addition of a concealer. So this is two in one 
actually three in one because it also gives you a brightening effect it's magical but say for example with this stone four i have tried it with this one i have tried it with a couple other ones pat mcgrath too what else i have tried with with the closest concealer and it plays really well with other concealers giving first that very fine fine smoothing effect correcting the dark under eye circles and then going for the coverage of a concealer so really really good product from Givenchy highly recommended if you're looking for a color corrector and again if you're looking for a new concealer along the lines to the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk something very light coverage you're gonna love this and april has been the month of blushes you know my love for the valentino blushes for the valentino bronzer because i mean let's just be serious right here the valentino blushes bronzers um the setting powder they are all the same formulation there's no difference and they brought something very unique and innovative for absolutely everything that i have seen in terms of powder the, their formula is just so unique so i added <laughs> various different blushes from Valentino and I have to tell you that I had been loving these pinky shade well number one and number two they are very close let me show you this is number one it's a gorgeous pinky tone and number two is also a gorgeous pinky tone now what is the main difference number one it has that more of like a lilac -y kind of like finish number two it's a little bit deeper and a little bit more fuchsia like they are both stunning and I love how creamy they are. I love the subtle radiance that they have without having any shimmer, any glitter. And the way that they go on the cheeks is just so fantastic. It's just airbrush. It makes your skin look so beautiful. I mean, it's the same uniqueness and that same gorgeous formula of the bronzer that is just incredible. Anyhow, this creaminess, it's uncomparable when you touch it it feels like a cream it goes like a powder it is so unique and again a formula that i haven't come across i mean that i recall off honestly from any other brand i'm talking about another amazing brand georgia armani they just launched their new luminous silk glow blushes and let me tell you that i'm in love with 40 mania it is the shade that i have on right now it is fruit punch summer in yeah it's summer in a little blush is so pretty it's gorgeous it's just gonna bring your cheeks alive and another thing that i like about these blushes from armani is how incredibly like filter they are it's like having a filter a soft focus effect that really just makes your pores area so like kind of like disappear not there and they blend beautifully another shade that i absolutely love is the shade number 50 i don't remember the name i think it's euphoria or euphoric anyhow is the shade 50 okay i will be leaving all those details in the description box below too but this one is a hybrid between a blush and a highlighter in fact i do have it on the top of my cheeks right now it is stunning now some people had said that oh this looks a lot alike like the orgasm like gosh i just dig my nail on this <laughs> okay so let me just swatch this shade right here number 40 mania and this is the shade number 50 so this one is the only one out of all the ones that they are available at sephora which are six shades by the way i did a full review comparison swatches on my cheeks side by side i film in natural light so anyhow if you want to see that and you want to really see all the shades available right now in us of the new armani blushes go and check my review after you watch this video but this is the only shade that really has that luminosity the other shades they are more like a soft matte kind of finish a very small radiance less radiant than valentino less radiant than gucci gucci are more silky valentino they are more airbrush Giorgio Armani more blurring hopefully all this makes sense because all of you ask me and the the answers are kind of like clear that differences are subtle the formulations are different 
So there you have it, friends. If you find, if you want different formulas, they are all different. But I thought it would be a disservice if I don't bring Orgasm by NARS and give it a swatch. So that way you can see the actual difference between these shades. So definitely Orgasm is not as glowy. It does have more pink than the one Giorgio Armani has a little bit more gold and a little bit more peach. So they are different. They are completely different. Now, some people were saying that it looks like the new Chanel Fantasy du Chanel. It is the new blush from the Le Blanc collection. That is more pink. It's not, yeah, it's not the same. To me, if anything, it looks more as Chanel Fleur de Printemps. So if you have this blush, it's a light to it if you mix it in the two shades here, okay? Yeah, exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah, this one looks a lot more like this. Perhaps this one, the one from Giorgio Armani, is just a little bit lighter and a little bit more golden in tone, but let me show it to you, okay? So let's do Armani first, okay? Then let's do Chanel Fleur de Printemps. Again, both shades together. I'm gonna go on the very top with NARS Orgasm, and you're gonna see this is more pink. This, the one from Fleur de Printemps, the one from Chanel, it has a little bit more peach in it. The one by Giorgio Armani kind of lands right in the middle. And then I have here the one from Giorgio Armani in Menia, which is the shade 40. Just wanna swatch it so you can see it right there. I'm just letting the exposure go down as much as possible so you can really see the shades. How different they are. You see, like this is NARS. You can see it's very pink if we compare it to the one by Giorgio Armani. So hopefully this helps you if you have been eyeing these blushes and a couple other blushes. These two fantastic formula from House Labs. A lot more pigmented, super soft, super creamy, non-powdery. What a beautiful formula from House Labs. Honestly, very very impressed with the rebranding and then this new Pat McGrath. Blush, this is not a new formula, but you know what? Kind of along the lines of the shape Pomelo Peach by House Labs, it does have, this is Divine Rose number three. It has a little bit more, it's pinky, but peachy at the same time. Oh, fantastic formulation. These two right here are just beautiful. So if you're looking for more like peachy tones, House Labs, you see this has a little bit more pink in it, the one by Pat McGrath. Beautiful formulas. I will say that the one by House Labs is more matte. The one from Pat McGrath, it's a little bit more, not radiant, but does have a little, a subtle, subtle radiance, like say the Giorgio Armani blushes, the ones that they look more matte, that is not that peachy tone that people are saying that looks like NARS, that it doesn't, it doesn't. I know everybody is always looking for a dupe. A dupe for these, a dupe for that. And I'm not against two dupes. I mean, I'm fine with dupes, but what I'm saying is like, you know, if you're having a dupe to be a true dupe, you know, yeah, okay. All right, okay, going into cream blushes and forgive me, please forgive me, darling Charlotte Tilbury and all our darlings out there. I was wrong, I was wrong. You know, my friends, I love the new Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush ones. They are fantastic. And I keep saying that the red one is like a slap on my face. But I think I was just using it the wrong way. I feel like I was using perhaps a little too much. <laughs> so I think it was a user error more than anything because now that I try the right amount, going little, not too much, just one dot, it's such a gorgeous shade, it's so beautiful. You know what, it kind of reminds me, the tone is not really red, to me it's kind of like this punchy kind of color from Giorgio Armani, like that. It just gives like a fruit punch kind of shade that is very beautiful and very healthy if you know how to use it. Bad Jacqueline, bad, bad, bad. <laughs> So bad because I perhaps used too much and that's why it looks so, I felt like, oh my gosh, somebody had, you know, slapped me on the face, but no, it doesn't. It's gorgeous. The formula is fantastic. It blends so easily. I think, oh, 
Charlotte Tilbury, she has done an amazing job with these blushes. I cannot wait to see more of hers on this exact formulation. And talking about also another cream blush, but this one is on a stick. One that I have been enjoying a lot when I'm just using like full cream, perhaps just like my SPF and a little bit of like cream bronzer. It is this one by Westman Atelier and it is in the shade Chouchette. It is a very kind of like peach a very natural kind of blush and i love the formulation it blends with easy i think any of the shades i mean i love um chouchette i love minette i love popette which is the bright kind of fuchsia kind of shade but if you want a shade like for every day i think this is a gorgeous tone it runs a little bit more warm in tone I, I mean, I love all of these shades. They are all gorgeous. Perhaps we can do, I have many on my collection. Perhaps we can do a dedicated video to these blushes and do side-by-side -side comparisons. Would you like to see that? Because honestly, this formulation from Westman Atelier is fantastic. It kind of, the finish is not really radiant. It's kind of like a soft matte finish, cloudy-like, very beautiful and very forgiving on texture and fine lines and enlarged pores. It's stunning. Before I continue into more makeup, I have to talk about this K18 hair oil. Okay, first of all, I haven't seen changes on my hair, on breakage. I don't have much breakage and I cannot really talk about results because first thing i don't have a lot of breakage on my hair i take really good care of my hair but one thing that i enjoy is you know how much i love my bumble and bumble invisible oil it is amazing it has uv protection it leaves my hair super soft and smooth it gives a shine without looking greasy okay well this one by k18 is giving me that shine without leaving my hair greasy i'm using it today but one thing that I noticed that every time that I use this K18 one, my hairstyle lasts a little bit longer. Like, for example, with the Bumble and Bumble, I put it in, it looks gorgeous throughout the day, I go to sleep, I use a silk bonnet, I know, call me extra, whatever, but I use a silk bonnet. Um, not always though, sometimes I forget, give it to that, but I use a silk pillowcase. But no matter what, the next day, my hair, I need to, you know, readjust it, obviously brush it, obviously, like, restyle it, not completely, but, you know, like, just pass through a little bit here and there. With this thing, I noticed that it passed one day, and then the second day, and then my hair it still looks the same. Like, if I have a styler for, you know, the same day, in other words, like it's holding even my style, it holds even the shine. So the shine is still there. So it's just like intriguing. So I'm gonna give you obviously an update if I see any better results in terms of what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to repair at the molecular level. So it's not only adding shine, it's supposed to just go beyond, right? I will definitely let you know about it, but so far, I'm impressed and I like what I see. A couple other products are these beautiful body creams. Oh my goodness, I'm ready for summer now. I'm so ready for summer. This is the new Whey Body Cream in some bars. Oh my gosh, let me tell you the smell. The smell is so good. Oh, this is fantastic. Imagine that you are at a very calm, tropical place, very like, mm, in the most gorgeous, fantastic resort, and they pass you a coconut, just a slice right there, and then pour you some beautiful, like, coconut cocktail with a little bit of pineapple creaminess, eyes. Oh, this is that. This is that, and more. And it doesn't smell like, you know, the typical santan lotion something that is like so overdone it is completely different now if you want to be in brazil so de janeiro or if you want to go to a tropical place with a latin move <laughs> then you go for this one this is the new sol de janeiro real radiance cream i mean totally the name says it's a little bit more uh, a little bit more like 
pineapple-y, more so than the one by way. A little bit more, perhaps a little bit more citrusy, but it also has a little bit of a florally kind of like frangipani kind of note. It's so pretty. It's tropical, but a little bit more like uplifting. And it does have a radiance. Now, when I first like give it a try here on camera, I said, oh, I don't see the radiance. But no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Now that I have been using it more and more, I not only see a beautiful glow to my skin, but when I'm outside, I can see like little, not shimmer particles. I feel like it has perhaps like, kind of like mica or something along those lines that I see a little bit of like tiny, 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 like glistening effect on my skin. It looks fantastic. It smells amazing. It's moisturizing. It does have spalling, so it's extra moisturizing. It's so, so good. So these two for the win. If you're looking for something different for summertime, springtime, go with this one. So they are just going to take you on vacation without jumping into a plane. I'm talking about summer. Well, we need to get bronzed up. We need to get that tan going on. So bronzers it is. So I tried a few new bronzers this past month of April. One that really like, oh, I felt like, oh my gosh why not? Um, I know why I didn't try it sooner. Okay, this is not my fault. This is makeup by Marga's fault. <laughs> they keep selling out and I understand now the reason. Wow, this makeup by Mario soft sculpt shaping stick. It is, yes, a little bit more. It's not a say grayish undertone or shadow cast as say a true contour stick, but it does have a fabulous formulation. It has more pigmented. You know what? It reminds me of the formula a little bit to the contour sticks by Westman Atelier, perhaps a little bit more moisturizing, but as smooth to actually blend with easy. And it's just amazing. And the amount of product that you get right here is fantastic. Another product that I have been enjoying a lot is the new Tower 28 Sculptino. Again, another product that is a bronzer slash school product. Super smooth. It reminds me in formula to tone four, the shading and luminate, the one that comes in the duo pan. But with the, the shade, well, this shade in particular, Getty, it reminds me to the medium tone of Chanel's um, bronzer in a pot. It's so pretty. It's super beautiful. Soft, perhaps a little bit more, it's still matte, but a little bit more luminous than the one from Makeup by Mario. Now you see right here, you can really tell that this one has more warmth to it, which it was to be expected from Tower 28 because at the end, you know, they have that vibe. They have that summer vibe. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Tower 28, the name comes because of Santa Monica, one of the towers for the lifeguards. It was the, the number 28. So I think it comes from that. Some, something along those lines is the story. But anyhow, beautiful cream bronzers. And then another great bronzer that I try this month is by Pat McGrath. Finally, she came with bronzers. The shade that I love the most, I try actually four shades. I try them here on camera too, is Desert Glow. Desert Glow, it is that shade for me. It does have not really a glowy finish as I was expecting. It's not a um, groundbreaking formula. Let me tell you that, you know, but in terms of what I expected from Pat McGrath, it is along the lines what I expected from her in terms of like the shade range. Nice, warm, super airbrush, non-powdery, blends with easy. I think she did a fantastic job. Like I said, the formula is not groundbreaking, like say a Valentino bronzer, like say what else? Like a Sisley bronzer or a Tom Ford bronzer is not a groundbreaking formulation, but it is a beautiful formula. Kind of along the lines, airbrush, as say the one from Charlotte Tilbury, that's going to be a little bit of the finish that you're, you're going to get. Desert Glow, do not think that because it says the word glow that is going to give you a glowy shimmer. No, it's actually not. In fact, it's 
not even radiant. It's like borderline a kiss in there, but not really that much. And in terms of highlighter, the only product that I have to tell you is this gorgeous Chanel Bomb Essential from the Le Blanc collection in this lilac tone. Oh, are you kidding me? This is fantastic. I'm actually using it on top of the Giorgio Armani bronzer and it is beautiful. You can apply it on top. Now these balms and shawls are fantastic if you have dry skin. I would say they are, yes, kind of like balmy. They do not remove your makeup. They give you a very healthy kind of glass skin-like, like wet skin look without being greasy, without like looking like you have something on top, you know, like a thick kind of thing. They are beautiful. And this shade in particular, I was really surprised that I was gonna like it. In fact, when I reviewed the Le Blanc collection, I said, most likely I'm not gonna pick it up. And then look at me painting my nails in lilac top. <laughs> and now, you know, getting this beauty right here. I think the shade is fantastic, it's different. I don't know if it's still available. I know these sell out super fast, just like everything, limited edition from Chanel, but I will try to link it and hopefully you can get your hands on it. Now for eyeshadows, no doubt, you know that I was gonna bring the Tom Ford new eyeshadow quads. I did individual reviews for each of these babies. This is Golden Hour. If you want something a little bit more sultry, mm, something warm, something for summertime, it is my understanding that these are not limited edition. I may be wrong, but that's what I heard, that they are not limited edition. They are just added to the collection of Tom Ford, and this is not the summer collection. I know some people have been calling it the summer collection. They are not. <laughs> the summer collection is the Soleil collection that is about to drop. I'm drooling for it, and believe me, I'm going to review it. Then I have here Golden Peach. If you are a peach lover, you're going to love this baby. So good. So, so good. This is actually, these are all wet and dry formulation, which are fantastic because they are just give you this ethereal kind of look when using it dry. And then they give you a very impactful look when using them wet. So that's what I love about that. And then the last one is Hazy Sensuality. Now, again, I have my reviews completely done. The last review that I upload is Golden Hour. If you want to see comparisons of all three of these eyeshadow quads, I will highly suggest you to go and look to those reviews. The one that I love the most as of right now is Hazy Sensuality. It's a little bit more pinky. It's a little bit more springtime, but rest assured that I will be using all of them more and more and more but the one that i have been gravitating towards is hazy sensuality it's the name says it hazy and sensual it's romantic it's pretty it's sensual it's beautiful it's mesmerizing it's uh, ethereal i mean like going on and on and on it's so good so good but then um i mean if i will have to rank them it will be so hard friends because although in the pan they may look alike they are different i love 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 each tone is an ideal peach eyeshadow quad and then golden hour it gave me a little bit more of a sultry look but oh they are fantastic and when i'm uploading this video i hope that they are readily available in us they were at neiman marcos but then they disappear from the website i know certain stores they have it in a store so that's one thing you may want to contact your local store whether Nima marcos bloomingdale's etc but i will try to link them because they are available in europe and they will be readily available here in the us but i don't know what's going on i think you know cheapman has been something that tom Ford unfortunately has been dealing with for quite a while now but i will do my best to have the links for you on the description box below or update you on my community tab and my instagram too now i don't know if these products are new or not but for the first time i try glossier eyeshadows and I'm very impressed. They are not the ones that they are gonna give you a ton of pigment. So if you're a person that likes a ton of pigment, which if you're watching my videos, if you're subscribed to my channel, I doubt that you're a person that wants something that is like, oh my gosh, look at these colors. If you like something along the lines of say Dior, Chanel, you know, subdue with pigment, but with these, oh my gosh, what kind of shades? 
excuse me, los hair. I'm just like so impressed. This palette means is the one that I'm using today alongside with something else. But how beautiful! There's no fallout. There's pigment. I guess I will say perhaps if they will have done a fourth eyeshadow would have been really nice. They decided to do a trio. With a trio, they work really well, and they are easy palettes. They are kind of like for your everyday. I love the one in teak. This is gorgeous too. If you're looking for something more like everyday, bronzy kind of look with a very kind of like J-Lo vibe, a little bit more golden summer goddess kind of look, you're going to love teak. But yeah, I love the uniqueness of this palette mist. I think it's beautiful. The formula is spot on. I'm very, very happy impressed. Talking about Dior, I also reviewed that Dior Summer 2023 collection. And I have to tell you that at the beginning of the month of April, I was like all into this baby, all into this beauty. This is Rivage. It is a very simple eyeshadow quad. I love the mix of coolness and warm tones for everyday looks. And I feel that it's different enough than the other ones. And then one palette that I was using on repeat every time that I will go, you know, like out for dinner or just out, like evening time, and it is Eden Rock. It is gorgeous. This blue shade is very different than other blues that I have on my collection because he has a little bit of a grayish undertone which you can actually buff it all over your eyelid and it looks fantastic if you don't want to pat it in terms so it can be very very blue. It is a stunning shade and using like this shade right in the middle is just very interesting and so pretty so so pretty so if you're looking for something a little bit more nighttime but something that give you something different something unique but that you can also use it in the morning you're gonna love love this palette and let's talk about two new formulations that i tried this april these new eyeshadows by kofi i'm just in shock impressed they are gorgeous they are stunning you know what they remind me they are you know like a potty they remind me a lot to the formulation of, I think it's, it's from Colourpop, something, I don't remember the name, but it's kind of like that formula that is very bouncy, but the way that they look on the eyes, they do not crack, they go super smooth, they are just like one and done eyeshadow, and you just need a tiny, tiny bit. I think this brand Kofi is coming with some really really good formulations and different for what we see in the market and I love that they have also different kind of shapes not only like this one is called Sitara Sparkles they also have one that is more bronzy tone that it was sold out at Sephora I really wanted it to pick it up but then they also have one that is kind of like a citrine kind of shade and another one that is kind of a little bit more aquamarine beautiful absolutely beautiful and another eyeshadow that got me so impressed Never thought about it's Sephora. Oh my, this is the eyeshadow that I'm using right now in the middle of my eyelid. It's called Chalking. It's, I don't know what type of formula this is. It's called a Charge Up. Yeah, Charge Up. That's the line, Charge Up. It's phenomenal. Nothing, 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 nothing to MB any other brand that they do liquid eyeshadows. I mean, like the Stila, for example. These are the same thing. They are thin. You can build them up. You have time to actually build up this formula. This shade is gorgeous. If you like a taupey tone, this is Lightning 03. It's a stunning too. If you want something super easy that you don't need to fast about a lot and that you will not have fallout that will not crack on your eyelids that doesn't feel heavy that doesn't feel itchy these are fantastic and the pricing i think they were like 12 dollars. i honestly i don't remember but they are just so so inexpensive and i got them actually when there was a sephora sales i got even 30 percent off regardless without with or without the 30% off, doesn't matter. They are just so good. And I highly, 
highly recommend them. I'm talking about liquid eyeshadows. The dates that I have been using, my SPF, my Westman Atelier, blush, you know, going more simplistic, like going out to, I don't know, like Target, etc. I have been using a lot this liquid eyeshadow by Giorgio Armani. It is kind of like, um, I think it's called Rose Gold. I don't remember, honestly, but I will make sure to put it on the description box below. Where do I? I'm going to just put it right here. It's more opaque, but it looks wet on the eyelids. It gave me everything that I need. Super easy to use. Love the applicator because it has this kind of like teardrop applicator. So it's super easy to spread on the eyelids. And it's just a gorgeous formula that lasts you the entire day that you don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, these are gonna crack. This is not gonna be long lasting, not at all, whatsoever. And one thing that I pair with this specific eyeshadow is this double ended eyeshadow by Bobbi Brown. These are new. And the one that I use the most out of all of them it is, let me tell you, golden pink and taupe. I love the taupey tone. It's a beautiful kind of cool tone that looks really, really nice. They blend super easy and they look very smooth, filter-like on the eyelids. So if you have a lot of texture on your eyelids or folds like myself, you're going to love, love this one. Yeah. There's another one of these eyeshadow sticks that I really like. I will make sure to put it on the description box below too. It's on my little pile of things, but they are, I mean, this is a proven formulation that has been a go-to for many, for many years. There's a reason why Bobby Brown, they are keen at doing these eyeshadows on the stick and having them dual and that matte on one side and then kind of like not really metallic but satiny on the other side i think they make them even more versatile the last eyeshadow palette before we go into lip products is this new one by Parmagraph. is her divine bronze look squad in venusian sunrise it is very simple it's nothing out of this world with the exception of this formula here it's gilded look at that it is one of the most beautiful eyeshadows that I have seen from Pat McGrath. And oh, wait, let, me put it, let me show you. This is just stunning. I mean, this shade is what it makes of this palette so special. So, so special. All the formulas are beautiful, but I think this is kind of like an everyday eyeshadow quad. So if you're looking for an eyeshadow quad that is kind of like everyday, but that you have a shade that you can jazz it up and take it to, you know, like an evening look, this is a really, really good palette from Pat McGrath. And you know, my friends, how much I love lipsticks and this month has been just fabulous. And the one that I have in my hands, it has been, oh, so good. This is the Chanel Rouge Coco Balm in the shade Pink Delight. Now, I know, I know, this shade has been going, I think, perhaps even viral because Sophie Richie, she just got married and everybody saw the makeup artist doing her makeup and using this baby right here. And I mean, the formula, it is so good. It is, it is a balm. That's what it is. I'll say, definitely use it with, a lip liner i do have a lip liner on i will make sure to leave it on the description box below too but this is just such a pretty shade for every day it just gives your lips a really beautiful sheen and it looks very healthy it does have a little bit of a warm tone too perfect for this season spring and summertime it's just fantastic and i love this formulation for every day from chanel it's so good i love that it's white too i wish that Chanel will do more white packaging because I have a thing with white. You know that, my friends. White and gold, call me please. And then from Dior, you know how much I love that Dior Attic Shine lipsticks. They are phenomenal. And during the sale, I got this beautiful white case. Talking about that, I love white. I wish though it was white and gold, but white and silver is so pretty too. But this shade is one of their new shades in the name. The name, the name, the name, let me tell you. This is Diorelita. If you like a kind of like a mauve or like a dusty kind of pink, you're gonna love this shade. It's definitely my lips are better. I like it, I will say even more than a pillow talk kind of shade, but it's on that vibe of a pillow talk. Super smooth, super creamy, super shiny, will give you so much shine to your lips. Let me switch the Rouge Coco Balm. 
so you can see the difference in shade you see like this is a lot lighter you have to pass it more times because it's really a balm and it has a little bit more of like a warm peachy kind of tone delightful and then this is a lipstick that i wasn't i wasn't gonna try but i decided to do so <laughs> are the new tone for liquid matte lipsticks <gasps> if i'm impressed with this they are fantastic i'm not gonna apply it again because you have seen me apply it um, i think a million times here on my channel but the shade is gorgeous again another dusty pink shade lots of pigment you're gonna feel like you're wearing nothing on your lips they are so comfortable matte but smooth they remind me a lot to the gucci liquid lipsticks super smooth kind of like creamy cloudy like and then full opacity full pigment super comfortable they will not crack on you they will not make feel or look your lips chap or dry no this is the complete opposite and you know my friends i rather have a satin lipstick so whenever i want to have just a little bit of shine but i love this shade and i really do not want to change the color of the lipstick i go with my beloved tom ford in the bath this is fantastic if you want your lips to look a little bit pouty and shiny and gorgeous and look at that i'm almost done i cannot believe it i'm almost done ah! um yeah i got another one during this process <laughs> already because it's one that i can live without and then another product that i also i use on top of pretty much any matte lipstick or just alone are the lip oils by dior they are so good i do prefer though the ones from hermes but the ones from hermes they do have a tint to them so they are not going to leave you a tint on your lips but they are not translucent while the ones from dior although they look as if they although they have different shades they really do not give much i mean they give a hint of something but honestly not much <laughs> so this is really really good i love the lip oils from dior they are an og for a reason my friends and after all these swatches i really wanted to bring you my true favorites and some updates on some products so that way if you have been wondering because i know we're changing season right now we're in between the spring summer is coming and you may want to know hey will this will these products work really good as we approach summertime and the hotter months so anyhow i hope that you enjoyed this video that you found it helpful informative if you haven't done so yet because i know I know I'm able to see my analytics and it shows that a lot of you are watching my videos but you're not yet subscribed. What are you waiting for? Help me out. I have been doing so many videos in the past years. I think I already reached or close to reach 1,000 videos. Are you kidding me? That's a ton. If you see other content creators and i'm not comparing myself to nobody okay but i'm just saying some of them they have even a greater amount of subscribers with a little amount of views so i hope that you can help me out let's grow our family here if you love everything beauty go ahead subscribe to my channel it's completely free make sure you bring that post notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads it will be incredible if we can also grow our family on instagram and tiktok so come and follow me there if you like this video please help me out by giving it a thumbs up share with family and friends and if you're not done watching my content i'll be leaving a couple other videos right here that i'm sure you're gonna love until the next time i hope you have a beautiful wonderful day bye, -bye.